Today's presentation is on hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in cats. Author Medina Regalia from Tarleton State University. So first, let's explain what hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is. It is one of the most common types of heart disease that we find in our felines. It is basically causing an abnormal thickening in several areas of the walls of the heart. It's going to create a burden on the heart, which will result in the poor relaxation and filling ability. On the image that you see here on the left hand side, you see the normal functioning heart. The right ventricle is displayed RV, LV is the left ventricle, RA is your right atrium, LA is our left atrium, MV right here, this is our mitral valve, LVOT stands for the left ventricular outflow tract where the heart blood, where the blood is pour, coming from. Then we have IVS right here, this is our interventricular septum. Here is our papillary muscle. And right here is our left ventricular free wall. As you can see in the picture on the right, this is a heart with a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. What has happened here is it has affected the base of the septum, but actually it could affect any portion of the heart. But in this particular case, the mitral valve has been displaced and there is a blockage right here that has led to dynamic obstruction of the left ventricular outflow tract. So we need to go down and better understand how the heart is actually working. The cause of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is actually caused by a defect in the functional unit of the heart that is called the sarcomere. Sarcomeres are capable of contracting the heart by use, the use of actin, which is forming the filaments, and myosin, which is a motor protein involved with muscle contraction within the heart. In animals that display this disease, the sarcomere has excessive actin and myosin, forming cross bridges in the heart. This eventually leads to thickening of the heart wall, primarily in the left ventricle is where we're seeing it in our felines. It also then causes hypercontractility because this excessive stress on the heart because of the thickening that is occurring. And we do see a predisposition for certain breeds to form excessive myosin. So what breeds are at risk? This is a domestic short hair cat. Because they have a multi-cultural background, multi-breed background, um, the potential for them to have any one of these gene genetic backgrounds is present. The other breeds that are predisposed are Maine Coons, our Ragdoll Cats, our Norwegian Forest Cats, our Sphinx Cats, as well as the Devon Rex cat. Other oriental breeds have also been known to have some predisposition, such as your Himalayans, your Burmese, and as well as your Persians. So what age group is most at risk of developing this disease? Primarily, we are seeing middle-aged cats. Anywhere from age three to five is when they come in and display some symptoms. Males do tend to have a, pro a higher tendency to get this disease than females. It's not clear as to why that is, but it, it does tend to happen in, in males more often. And they have found a juvenile form of this disease known to affect very young ragdoll kittens. So what kind of clinical signs are you going to be seeing in your cat? Most cats have no initial clinical signs. They may suddenly develop severe heart failure or a systemic thromboembolism. In many cases, cats often have no evidence of heart murmur to allow for any kind of early intervention. 
If we are seeing early signs, it's typically in the form of a systolic murmur when they go to the vet and they get their, their regular physicals. The, the vet may also detect a gallop rhythm, which typically indicates that the left ventricle is starting to stiffen and thicken. Some obvious signs that you may see in your cat is labored breathing. This would be present in animals that have previously been diagnosed with chronic heart failure. Exercise intolerance may also be present. And in some cases, a syndrome called FATE may occur. This stands for feline arterial thromboembolism, which is a blood clot that originates in the heart and blocks blood flow to one or more limbs. This syndrome will cause a sudden onset of paralysis in one or several legs. The affected extremities will also be very cold and very pale. So what tests can you expect your veterinarian to run if they do suspect that your animal has this disease? First, they're going to get a full physical exam. You can expect that your, your vet and your vet tech are gonna be auscultating or listening to the heart to listen for any obvious murmurs or any abnormal heart rhythms. They may also choose to do an ECG and that can be done and that is to better assess the rhythm of the heart to make sure that there is no murmurs. The most absolute conclusive test for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is via using an electrocardiograph machine. The doctor may choose to do radiographs, but often they do not show us evidence of disease. On some occasions, it will show a left atrium enlargement. It may show pulmonary edema and pleural effusion, but due to the conical nature of this disease and how it forms around the heart, it may be very difficult to assess via radiograph. Lastly, some patients um, will have their thyroid tested to rule out any hormonal imbalances that could be causing exacerbation of this disease. Hypothyroidism, as well as systemic hypertension or elevated blood pressure, is also a known cause to cause secondary hypercardiomyopathy syndrome. If the cat is over five, it is recommended to test the blood th thyroid hormones to exclude this as a cause. So what treatment options are available to you and your pet? If, the, if your pet has been diagnosed with mild hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, close monitoring is often advisable. They will recommend regular office visit to assess the progression of the disease. And some medications may be prescribed, such as beta blockers or calcium channel blockers. They also may be put on a low dose of aspirin or a medication called Plavix that will make sure that they do not have any thromboembolisms. In advanced hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, medications may be prescribed to avoid any risk of clot formation. Diuretics may also help ease any fluid buildup around the heart and the lungs, and then eventually supportive therapy in the form of pain control and physical th therapy if the cat is experiencing the syndrome of fate. That could be recommended as well. So what is the long-term prognosis? This is a very slow progressive disease, typically. There is no cure at this time, but with medical management, your pain should be monitored and should be made comfortable. In very advanced stages of this disease, you may see some complications with congestive heart failure or thromboembolism. In these particular cases, the animal has a very poor long-term prog prognosis. They have a very short survival time. If they are diagnosed with congestive heart failure, typically they are given one to one and a half years. And the average survival time for an animal that has a thromboembolism is approximately six months. But we know while there is no cure and there is no exact timeline for disease progression, each patient should be assessed on an individual basis and all health factors will be taken into consideration when determining the animal's survival time and long-term prognosis. 
So you may be wondering, is there anything I could have done to prevent this in my animal? There is no prevention for this disease. It is primarily a genetic disease. So if you do, if you are the owner of a predisposed breed, you should have regular checkups to monitor for any changes. And if there's any known relation to an affected cat, it should be presumed that this animal has inherited the gene as well and they should be regularly assessed for heart murmurs. Known patients should also not be bred. So if you have a female or a male, they should be spayed or neutered so as not to, to pass on the disease. For further information on this disease, here are some references that you may look into.